<laughs> All right, hello, welcome back to the stream, everybody. I hope you had a great break. Uh, so, the five of you are shown to wash basins here at the Split Tail Ranch, given a chance to freshen up uh, for some, you know, afternoon uh, tea, I guess, with the with the lady. She's she's offered to put mm -hmm. on some lunch and and make uh, things happen. Do you. Do you guys interact at all? What do you do with your time to yourselves? I'm, uh, like, I'm gonna treat the wound that I got a little bit more thoroughly. Uh -huh. I uh, I took a pretty bad bite to the shoulder. I'm gonna make sure that's properly cleaned up. Yeah, excellent. Spend some time disinfecting it, making it uh, mm -hmm. clean up, bandage it well. Uh, you're provided with a, a bunch of uh, things that you need to do that, right? When you make it clear that you're working <coughs> on this wound, a maid just kind of appears, uh, right? And right. says, oh, uh, here, let us get you what you need. And she gives you gauze and, like, all kinds of right. field dressing uh, just seem to be readily on hand uh, to help you with that. I am um, a turn to uh, Gormak, and I'm like, can I have my fine dress out of the out of your pocket please and Gormack. then i like wait there you go yeah Gor gormack like gets emily's things out which is like the size of like a dice bag and just kind of like <laughs> sticks his fingers in there and like starts like he finally like pulls out emily's dress All right and like after like i've bandaged and washed myself i'm like i, I take it from him like turn around <laughs> He does. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna get into my fine clothes. <laughs> That's so adorable. <laughs> right? <laughs> what a lady. Exactly. Just because I'm a pixie doesn't mean I'm not a lady. It's funny because he'd have to squint to see anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As he gets like, older, his eyes get more dodgy and he just can't <laughs> tell me. If I stood next to dolls, he'd just be like, I'm gonna take that one. And it's yeah, like, yeah. A doll. He puts, puts a doll on his shoulder, and Emily, and it falls off, and he's like, "Emily, are you drunk?" What? <laughs> Alrighty. So you have had a chance to to freshen up and clean up. You come down to the. You're you're led by another maid into kind of like a little dining table area uh, where there is a, a nice little assortment of, of sandwiches. Uh, you can see that they're like lightly prepared cucumbers, salted um, with a little bit of uh, spread. And there's different cheeses and, and even a, a haunch of meat as well. Uh, it seems to be dried and smoked to be carved and consumed with it. Uh, the the lady of the of the ranch is sitting at like the head of the table, and she beckons you to sit on on either sides of this of this kind of long dining room table. As I as I sit down, I'm gonna politely raise a hand and look at the lady. Oh my dear, you don't have to raise a hand around here. <clears throat> lady boss, I was wondering. Where Max like chewing on a cucumber. <laughs> why is why is every everything so big here? Well, we grow them big. It's split tail. It's our it's our prerogative. It's it's our probably best feature of any of our animals. Big and strong, and a little bit more than the usual. It's the way we can charge more. Is that in the food or? <laughs> well, yeah, you feed them enough, but it's also selective breeding. We've been. Split Tail has been open for hundreds of years. The secrets of my family have been passed down for a while. You know, there's a little magic involved in everything. Anything worthwhile. Mm -hmm. By the way, the name's Jasmine. I'm sorry, it was rude of me not to introduce myself. Uh, I didn't catch any of y'all's names. What were they? Likewise, my, uh, my name's Tom. Tom, pleasure to meet you. Thank you much. I kind of like do a curtsy next to my little cucumber sandwich, and I'm like, <coughs> I'm Emily, Emily Pumpkin. Hello, Emily. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you. She kind of like, she doesn't, she can't curtsy from her seated chair, but she kind of inclines her head at you. Um, she looks to, to the rest of you expectantly. Uh, Gormak just kind of puts a hand across his, his chest and just goes, Gormak. Pleasure. Yes, yeah, the pleasure is mine, Gormak. My name is Janlar. Oh, very proudly named indeed. I hope you live up to it. And you, my dear, with the question, what was your name? 
I already forgot her first name. What was her first name? Oh, my name. <laughs> it's Jasmine, honey. It's Jasmine. Jasmine, right? Yes. Like the flower. Like okay. the flower, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're just best friends, destined to be. I am uh, sorry. It's late. Okay. Like <laughs> 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 she introduces herself, I forget her name. The second time I do. Um. Um, well, I'll say it's a it's a pleasure to meet you, Jasmine Boss. Um, my name <laughs> my name is First Light of the Sun on Dew Soaked Morning Petals. Um, you can call me Rose, though, oh, if you want. Wonderful, Rose, it is. Thank you. That is quite a mouthful. All right. Well, please enjoy some sandwiches here. I have to say, you being seekers and all is very. Uh, Interesting to me. Can I see your marks? Uh, Tom pulls his out really fast. It's like verification. He probably keeps it in like a pouch on his on his belt. He doesn't usually wear it. She smiles at you when you show her the pin. She shakes her head. She's like, no, no. I mean your marks. Any fool can kill a seeker and grab his pin. I just got to make sure I know who I'm working with. Uh, so out of... Or, is this something that I forgot about? Like, did they say that we we're going to be marked after we finish our final test? This is new information to you as far yeah. as, as you know. Uh, we don't have any marks on us. I'm not sure if this is something that comes later in the uh, the process, but we became Seekers, I guess, yesterday. It's, wow, it's only been uh, a day. We're going yeah. on our final, uh, final challenge or quest, if you will. I uh, see. Up to, uh, what was it called? Willard's Mill? All right, a little more in a day from here, absolutely. Oh, uh, all right. Well, seeing as your initiates and all, I can't be too kind. See if I—I I was planning on helping you out, giving you some fine steeds to ride on, but uh, seems that that would not be a good investment. Most of the initiates don't make it out of the initiate stage. <sighs> Oh, you put me in a in a pickle. Unfortunate, but I I have maybe a slightly more humble request. Oh. Our uh, our cart took a bit of damage in the initial stampede. I don't suppose you have a, a carpenter on staff who could help us finish repairs on it? Mm, I do. It would take a little while. I had a look at it. Quite beat up. Mm, I don't work as fast as I used to. Let's see. How about this? I'll give you one of mine as a trade you give me your beat up one i'll work on it fix it up so i can use it around here i'll give you one of mine hell i'll even give you some of the regular oxen to pull it i'm not going to hand out an auroch to a to a someone going to die but i could spare a head of oxen or two she kind of looks to all of you she says i whether or not you're gonna survive i I can owe you that much. You saved me so much more with the, the Auroch. But I'll make you this deal here. You come back to me when you get your marks. Show them to me. I'll pay you back proper. But until then, a new cart, new oxen? Sure. A fine meal? Uh, would, you, would you allow for one little bit of an idiosyncrasy from me? Uh, when, we, when we do come back, because I fully intend to survive this journey, uh, would you mind trading our carts back again? That that cart was not quite a gift, but something close to it. Has a Absolutely. bit of sentimental value to me. Sure. Hail, I'll trade you back the cart even if even after the even if you don't have the marks, right? If <laughs> if you come back and you know the seeker life was too tough for you, you're giving it up. I'll still trade you the cart back. Sure, that sounds workable Don't for me. Don't shake your head at me, J Jama, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you realize just how hard it is. Do you know how many full-fledged seekers there are in the world? I'm sorry, Gormak. I was talking over you like a fool. What were you saying? Nothing is tougher than Gormak. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, I believe that, I guess. There's more people who give up the life before they become <coughs> full-fledged seekers than you realize. Half the people walking around with these pins, they don't know anything. <clears throat> anyway, please, enjoy the meal. If you need anything, I have a staff of maids on hand. I'd be happy to hear your stories. Where do y'all come from? Quite a menagerie of people. 
I'm simply from Sarmanath. My my life is not exactly the most. Uh, I, I I imagine you can glean what information there is to glean just from looking at me. Grew up in a temple. Lived in a temple. Finally left the temple. The light of Bridge S is very important to spread. Noble cause to leave. What about the rest? Yeah, I'm sure there's got to be some kind of story here. Uh, no, just a traveling <coughs> bard. Uh, my parents were fighters. A traveling I... bard with no story to tell? Nah, I truly well, have I seen have it all. plenty of stories of great fighters doing great deeds in the arena, but not of my own yet. Mm, I see. I see. All right. Well, let's have a nice lunch then. Uh, and she just kind of begins eating. You have, you know, this this nice time in front of you with her, um, and you can sit here and rest up. You can go ahead and spend some hit dice, have a short rest, or you can stay here for the night. Um, the the afternoon is kind of yours to do with as you will, or you can trade cards and just head right on back out. Um, so uh, we might, I guess, <laughs> want to head out and get a little more distance. But yeah, we'll definitely do a short rest. At some point, I want to ask her, what are these uh, these marks that you were mentioning? Are those who finish their quest branded? Gormak oh. looks alarmed at the word branded. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, buddy. I won't let them brand you. She's well, we brand may. you? He, he may need to. <laughs> yeah, he may. She smiles well, a little bit. And, I don't uh, think... I was like, as a, like that, I'm like, I'm smaller than a brand. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, I'm sure Gormack they can Gormack resize goes, it. I won't let them brand you either, Emily. <laughs> but anyways, we we don't know any. What are what are these marks again? She just smiles a little bit and she puts she like leans way back in her chair and puts her legs up on the on the table and raises up her like sundress up to about her knee and you can see that like just on the inside of her thigh there's a there's a like deeply purple mark. Um, and it is in this, like, eye that sees. Uh, it looks exactly like that that's on your pin. She says, Does it, does it work. look like a bruise or a tattoo? It, it looks more like a tattoo, but unnatural, okay. right? It, it, a tattoo yeah. artist would not be able to put that on there. Uh, it, sure. is, it is innately and, and, and obviously magical. Uh, and she shows this to you and just kind of smiles a little bit and says... There's no needle or brand or metal that could put this on you. I wouldn't worry too much about that, my friend Gormack. Woo! <laughs> so, a previous <laughs> seeker, then. <sighs> yeah, it's a requirement by my pappy. You see, uh, in order to take over the ranch, you gotta be able to run the magics that keep it working. You gotta mm. be a seeker to do that. So they have access to magics that uh, others don't? Of course they do. They're the only ones that deal with the rift magic. And they hoard it. I don't know. I did my time. Did enough to get the mark. That's all I need. Hmm. That eye. <sighs> so it's, it's placed in magically, is it? You'll find out. Or you'll die either way. Very well. <sighs> well, I, I don't mean to uh, turn down your hospitality, but I think we should probably get back on the road. Of course. I wouldn't stand between you and your test. I'm, like, trying to pull this piece of cucumber out of the sandwich to take it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think we, we swap out cards. We get a couple of oxen to pull it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... The, at one point... And o ox will... Uh, they'll graze, right? Yes. Okay. So. Gormak's, like, looking at Tom, like, what do we need the oxen for? Gormak is as strong as an oryx. I beat the other one. You're too strong, Gormak. Gormak nods, like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so they, the, there's a, another ranch hand working with the one that you rode in with, and they pull a, a cart out and uh, hitch it mm-hmm. to, some, to a, a small team of two oxen. Uh, to oxen, uh, they they will graze, but they also uh, put a pound of food in the in the back with you, uh, so that yeah. you can you know just oats some grains so that, that can feed them. Sure. Um, and uh, we'll you know move everything over. Uh, so I guess by by now it's been more than like half an hour since we were sitting yeah, at the table having take lunch. A short rest, yeah. Yeah. Been- right, so let, let's let's say it's been like an hour or something, right? Sure. So an, so an hour after lunch, um, I am going to tug again at Jemma's robe. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to say, uh, yeah. Professor Jenla, one question. I've been thinking, um, what does idiosyncrasy mean? Let me just consult my memory really fast. (laughs) I'm playing a 17 intelligence wizard, but I'm not a 17 intelligence. (laughs) (laughs) I'm playing a nine intelligence minotaur, so (laughs) I'm gonna dial it back a bit. I like to imagine that Janlar is just like uh, pulling out a book. He's like, I don't know. Let's see. (laughs) We'll find out. Oh, it's probably trying to give, like, the proper definition, right? So he's like, oh, this word comes from this family. It's like old elvish for, you know. Uh, peculiarity or constitution of tem- or temperament. Of constitution yeah. of temperament. Not a sink for idiots. <laughs> Apparently not. Interesting. And I guess I'll scribble a, a tiny note in the back of my etiquette book. Nice. All right. Yeah. You make some notes about idiosyncrasies. Can I ask <laughs> the farm hands while they're helping us uh, get our wagon together uh, if those beasts that attack them are common? Do they see those often? Uh, often enough. Yeah. They're, they're not an everyday affair, but if you're traveling through the hills, you better be prepared. To, you might find a couple of them. They like to attack. They like to attack big beasts, right? Like cows and oxen and cattle. And it's what they. Ormac just goes, "Let them come." <laughs> what other what other creatures do you do you guys encounter with these with your orcs? Mm, well, you, you, you got to watch out for anything that's a, a sh- if you see a shadow in the sky that's bigger than you, uh, you should probably find some cover if you can. Uh, there's not much that'll pick up an Orok, but they'll get a horse or they'll get you. Uh, I know that there's a, there's a few, uh, giant eagles and hippogriffs and just things living in the mountains come down and hunt in the hills. Uh, I've, I've even heard tale of a harpy or two. Uh, you know, there's, there's the, the fey, the creatures that run around here. You gotta be careful, you know. Uh, this ain't the city with your walls and your salt and your iron that's gonna... And keep you safe, you know. If you're out in the hills, so whatever, whatever protections you take against the the, the spirits of magic and the run of buck. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Not every day I get to help a seeker, you know. All right, here, here's your card. <laughs> and, uh, thank you. Thank he you. Walks we'll, off. we'll be on our way. Let's get out of your hair. Get it's far, man. Uh, I leave him alone. Yeah, you continue on your journey then, uh, and yep. and you you make your way uh, through the ranch back out into the hills uh, and begin traveling. <clears throat> uh, you. I imagine we're not going to get too far today because it's already yeah, a bit Yeah, you, you go a, a number of miles, uh, and as the sun begins hitting its its sunset, the, the reds and, and yellows crossing the sky, uh, you're following a path that kind of dips down um, by kind of like a cliff face, uh, and there's, there's a, a, a stream running through it. Uh, and it, it's about this time uh, that you see kind of these white 
almost like paint uh, features on some of the cliff sides here. Uh, the, it seems like with the, the sunset in particular, uh, it, it, it illuminates these. Uh, it illuminates these almost like partial paintings. They they all seem incomplete <laughs> on, on various sides um, uh, along the cliff side as the as the stream runs beneath it. Uh, dotting the the cliffside as well are, are a number of kind of just small cave openings. Um, to your left is, of course, the rolling kind of hills that you've been traveling through. Uh, I think we. Do you want to look and see if any of those caves are shallow enough for us to make a uh, a camp in? Sure. Um, give yourselves, uh, who's searching? It sounds like you're searching. Give yeah. me an, an investigation, just intelligence, I think. Uh, okay. no special, special, uh, requirement. So it's not there. wisdom. Dark. You could be wisdom if you wanted it to be. Yeah. Sure. Some, that's, think, that's yeah. survival You're based. searching in general. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Um, so two for wisdom. <laughs> I don't think I have the, uh, the skill cause it's investigation yet. Yes. Just plus two, uh, 10. Okay, awesome. Uh, so you you spend some time uh, investigating the uh, cave sides, uh, and you find a number of them that are shallow but uh, could hold the party. Uh, what you don't find is one that could hold the party and the cart. Maybe you could double up on it. Um, yeah, but you, you you just you just find little shallow caves, f good enough for like a few people at most, um, mm -hmm. as you as you investigate the hillside there. <clears throat> I mean, I think that's fine because I assume we're gonna keep somebody on watch, right? Sure. Yeah. So we can send the party in and have one person outside keeping watch at the entrance to the cave, keeping an eye on the cart. Yeah, kind of push the cart outside the cave to help provide more cover. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. So you you just gonna select one of these and uh, and stop for the night here? Yeah, we just grab one of the shallow spots. Okay. A cave that definitely does not go to the deepest, darkest places of the earth. Yeah. No. They're they're all fairly. The ones you manage <laughs> to, to the find. the underdog. <laughs> the ones you manage to find are fairly shallow, and you begin Perfect. setting up camp and and doing that. Uh, <clears throat> as the as the sun continues to set, you you build a, a small fire and and. Uh, get yourselves prepared for the night. Uh, what does that look like? What are, what do you guys do as you decompress after your first day of, of travel as seekers? Uh, I think Tom works on building up the fire because I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna want something to keep warm. Um, he, he doesn't really know what to do for cooking. He's not really a chef himself. Food was always kind of made for him in the temple. Uh -huh. I think we're kind of like getting the rations out and he's like trying to think of a way to heat things. And he just kind of like, stick something above the fire a little bit see if it'll it'll be a little bit better if he roasts it a bit <laughs> so okay. is the is the fire inside or outside of the cave uh i don't know probably near the I, entrance to get i will tell you for some survival tips yeah. you never put a fire in a cave you smoke yourself out you put it in yeah. the yeah. yeah you put it at the entrance that's yeah. i watched you play some game on twitch if you were building a fire in a cave Yes. You never do that. It's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> How do you put, I thought it wasn't like a proper, you know, enclosed thing, but more like half. You said it was very shallow, right? Yeah, like, it's very I was, shallow. It was more like this, yeah. right? Not Kinda like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. This. It's not like you're gonna walk deep into this cave. This cave's the the one that uh, Tom selected is just it's more like know, a divot in the, in the cliff. Yeah, it's more more like a, a, a deep divot. You, you have room for yourselves and a little bit of space to spread out, but not much beyond that. Your, your cart wouldn't really fit with you. I've already come up with a bardic tale. That's what I was doing just then while we were fighting. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, so you guys have bed down for the night. Uh, do you all sleep? Uh, you mentioned watches. How does that gonna Yeah, I assume we just kind of. So there's five of us. Uh huh. If oh, we I do was 10 happy. hours, we could do two hour watches per person. I'm quite happy after the first four hours to take the rest because I only need four hours. Oh, yeah. Um, I think as a wizard, I would want to wake up and immediately start learning my spells. So I'd probably want to go earlier. Yeah, you probably do like the first watch and then go to yeah. bed. Uh, so I guess I'll take like second watch, and then and then Emily will just take everything after the first two watches. Okay, okay, that sounds <laughs> excellent. Uh, 
So, uh, you you guys you guys bed down for the night. Uh, first watch. Uh, tell me what you're doing. What what what? How are you how are you spending your time alone while the rest of your companions begin sleeping? Well, I'm not a very perceptive person, so I'm probably uh, idly scrolling through my spell book uh, or a book of lore that I have on me um, while I should be uh, keeping a better watch. Um, but I'm stoking the fire, <laughs> making sure there's enough light at least to read my book. Can can Rose? Can you sleep in this in this cave? You've you've uh. been experiencing uh, sacred flames from either the Tom. <laughs> the Janlar's been throwing fire bolts around. Now they're building this fire in the cave. Like, are you resting? Like, how is this affecting you? Uh, it's I'm having a really rough night, so I haven't talked to people about it right yet. But I'm like. So Rose is, is taking the sleeping place as far away from the fire as possible, right? Mm -hmm. um, so she's just somewhere in a corner and she's rolled up and she has her back to the cave and has her like eyes towards the fire and she's trying to sleep, but she always keeps like squinting and just having another look at it. She just doesn't trust it, right? But she just keeps looking at it. So she's like not sleeping very well. You know, she wakes up, but she goes back to sleep. And then, she, you know, she just mm -hmm. sometimes she gets like startled because in her mind, she just sees the fire bolts, you know, just <laughs> raining down right in front of her. She just. If it, if it helps, we probably, we probably let the fire die at some point, I assume, over the night, right? We're not going to we're not going to put effort into keeping it going all night, I assume. I mean, I it, how cold is it? Watch those so that I can read. It's a, yeah, how, it's how a, cold is it? It's a fall night, and out here in the hills, uh, you're you're kind of in in a in a in a valley, right? And next to this kind of cliffside that you've chosen to rest in a cave, uh, the uh, sun sets early here, and the the winter's night or the the fall night gets cold fast. It feels kind mm -hmm. of like an early winter's night. Um, it, it's chilly enough that you would want to wrap up in a in a nice okay. blanket. Um, it's not going to kill you levels of cold, but people have gotten sick and died in, in warmer weather. So yeah. most of Emily's watch is her dragging sticks that are way longer than she <laughs> wall, trying to put them on the fire. <laughs> and you wake up and there's just a crap ton of sticks burning away, but there's no real logs <laughs> on the fire left. <laughs> All right. So, Janlar, you spend your time feeding this fire, being quiet and introspective with yourself. Uh, and the, the night passes uh, uneventfully for you. Uh, and you uh, wake up. Was it Tom taking second watch? Yeah. All right. We wake up, Tom. Tom, what do you do on your watch? How do you spend your time alone with yourself? Uh, so Tom, instead of relying on, like, firelight, uh, casts his light cantrip on this, this bizarre lantern that he's carrying. Uh, it, it looks really weird when you look at it because it looks like this opaque, just solid lump of glass inside of a lantern frame. Yeah. But yeah, he uses his cantrip and it just kind of glows with this, this soft golden light. Awesome. Uh, awesome. He relies on that during his watch. And he, he's a pretty alert person. Um, so alert that he's going to rely on his passive perception instead of actually like <laughs> actively doing watch. So he, he just trusts that he'll notice anything coming up just naturally, right? Okay. And he spends most of his watch um, kind of like looking at this this holy symbol that was given to him by yeah. uh, yeah, a yeah, member yeah. of the church. And he has this, this kind of like serious expression on his face as he as he looks at it um and he just kind of seems to be like sitting there musing and kind of pontificating a little bit on on life yeah so until you, his, uh, you have this this like golden emblazed holy symbol um yeah. it is as all holy symbols of bridge s are uh, a woman wreathed in flame uh the woman has three heads um and each of them you know of different ages one youthful and young one motherly and one older mm -hmm. uh and you know this this thing feels almost warm to the touch in your hand um and you know whatever passion or inspiration you can gain from it you know that this has been in the church for a long time maybe feels maybe it just kind of like as 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 it's warm to the touch it kind of like fills not only your body but your your mind and your and your heart with a little bit of flame as well yeah I think it's kind of a bizarre feeling for Tom, where on the one hand it is it is like a, a sacred holy symbol for for his faith, but on the other hand it's also kind of like a weight on him because his whole point of going out was to like 
escape the like the bindings of the church and it's it's just kind of this this extra weight that he's carrying this this thing dragging him back toward that life that he escaped right right um so as you're sitting in the in the firelight contemplating this um you are perceptive enough to hear uh this this slow low uh sound and at first you can't quite place it but as you your ears perk up and you begin listening um you hear the what what sounds like a, a woman weeping what do you do do you wake the party for this or do you try to handle it yourself uh, so I've seen enough fantasy stories to know this never ends well. <laughs> it's always a trap. I thought trap. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Tom is going to wake. It's Jan a Lar. trap. Tom is specifically going to wake Janlar here. Okay. Yeah. You uh, you brush Janlar awake after just a just a few sh- short hours of shut eye. Yeah. Uh, and uh, did I oversleep? <laughs> no, no, not, not quite. Really? I, I need. Really dark out still. I need. I need your expertise for a minute here, Janlar. All right. Maybe, but between I your knowledge of the arcane, at that I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Between your knowledge of the arcane and my knowledge of the divine, maybe we'll uh we'll figure out what's going on here. And I'm gonna lead him outside and kind of like get him to listen and and hear this this weeping sound. Uh, you two step yeah, outside. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah, listen for sure. Okay, yeah, you got you two step outside, and and as you leave the cave, you you hear this this weeping sound. Um, it, in 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 fact, it, it raises in timbre and pitch, um, and you can hear it coming from downstream. Um, you, you would think it's faint, but you can hear it maybe in the in the hundreds of feet potentially you think that the fact you're in this kind of cliffside that's reverberating back through to you mm-hmm. um as you step outside you notice that in the full moonlight um these these uh gl- these paintings glitter even more and more has been revealed since sunset uh and they seem to make some kind of script uh, in runic uh, uh, scripting across the, the cliffside, uh, glittering in the moonlight. Um, yeah, but I, can I try to investigate these? Uh... Sure. Uh, what do you do? What lang- uh, First of all, what languages do you read and write? I read and write Elvish and... Uh... Okay. Sylvan. So I want you to Elvin make I want you to make an investigation intelligence roll. Um, you immediately recognize these runes um, as as this ancient fey. Uh, this is not specifically elven, but this is a language of the the court uh, when it came through the rifts. This is uh, a language that was essentially the common of the other world, um, and it's similar enough to elvish that you might be able to piece it together. Okay. You said investigation? Investigation intelligence, please. Yes. Okay. I'm proficient in that, so it's a d20 plus 5. Knowing Elvin Nine. and Sylvan might help, too. He does. He said he didn't know Sylvan, yeah? <coughs> yeah. No, I know Sylvan and Elvin. Oh, you don't need to invest. I'm sorry. My brain heard Celestial. Um, <laughs> I thought you spoke with angels, man. Okay, no, you don't need to investigate it at all. You recognize this as Sylvan. Um, and uh, you read it, and it's long, like, script. It's not necessarily letters that they used uh, in the old tongue, uh, but it is, like, runes that have meaning. And, and this combination of runes specifically means refuge. Um, and it's it's painted uh, over uh, the cliffside, maybe a few hundred feet uh, to your to your south. Means what? Refuge. Refuge. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, if anyone's awake, I let them know. The hillside and the cliff. Tom uh, is awake and right beside you. <laughs> I didn't know if anyone else is awake. So no, I, I only woke you up. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So I just, I just let Tom know that these uh, runes are ancient sylvan runes that mean refuge and more on the the weeping i'll be i don't believe it right i mean who would be out in this in this wilderness alone yeah i agree i do you know any any sort of creatures that could that could uh lend this sort of deception i've heard tales but i don't know anything concrete i think back to my time as a uh, 
wizard's apprentice, never really going out in the world, kind of just helping him in his shop. Um, there are lots of tales of trickery and fay in this world, right? Um, when when you go to sleep at night in villages, right, you often uh, leave a bowl of milk out for the pixies or goblins that might alight on your windowsill, right? You make salt circles, right, in your doorway to prevent unwanted entry, things like that. Uh, so there are many stories of, of trickery out there. Uh, it sounds like you haven't investigated this specifically. Why don't you make... Uh, history intelligence check to see if you remember Ooh, any of I do have a history things. proficiency if that would be the kind of thing uh, sure I'll let uh, either of you make a history intelligence check to see if you've uh, heard uh, of this particular I instance I have a plus 5 to it you do it then you have a you have a better chance of getting it than me Uh, you haven't heard of specifically weeping uh, as as one of these stories, um, yeah, but you do sense. you do know of many watery spirits and watery creatures that have come since then uh, that are known for luring people to to their death. That's fairly common knowledge, but you don't mm -hmm. place weeping alongside any one of them specifically. I, I haven't heard of any specific. Uh creatures that caught that would weep but out here in the wilderness a single voice it's, that's unlikely agreed should we just leave it be then if we were if we were more uh more well rested i might i might suggest we go investigate but i think everyone could use their rest we had multiple people injured today in the battle i'm fully prepared all my spells are prepared still untouched <laughs> Well, I mean, if you if you would like to go investigate, we always could. Oh, we sh the party should rest. We okay. Need it. Very well. That's all. You can uh, you can go back to sleep. Sorry to disturb you. Yeah, go ahead and pass out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, uh, I go I go back to to my watch, and um, if it if it sounds like the weeping is like coming toward us, that's that's a sign to be more alert. But otherwise, I think I just kind of do my best to ignore it. It's probably a little bit more of a melancholy night with that with that sound in the background. It is it is somber and sad um, and your your watch ends and it comes to it comes yeah. time and to I, wake I'll up warn and Emily about the voice and yeah, say Yeah, I would like, I would Sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, I, I warn Emily about the voice and say like if you really want to go investigate, uh, be my guest, but I'd be very careful because I I suspect it's some kind of trap. Oh no. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say I didn't I didn't hear it during my watch originally, so it started during your watch. Yeah. I'll be right here. Don't even worry about it. I put some I put some logs by the fire for you. So really oh, good. thank you. I was already worrying about that. <laughs> Anyways, I like the idea the that you put logs by the fire that are like bigger than Emily. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Emily. I, I like to imagine Emily just like struggling to like move a log over and get it into the pile. <laughs> It's like two feet away, but that's still just like a, a right. massive journey for the scary. Yeah, that's an hour. That's an hour for me. <laughs> so yeah, take, every time Emily has to put a log on, she has to wake Gormak up, and he just kind of has to, <laughs> like picks it up and just throws it into the fire and like rolls over and sleeps again. <laughs> Thank you, big boy. <laughs> I've actually come up with two like poems slash stories to go with today's awesome. experience. Awesome. She'll awesome. be reciting as she's trying to lift a log. Right, she's like <laughs> the mighty great champion rushes, but is rushed by a strong beast. He lowers his head, readied his back, slamming into the beast. Wrestling, uh, the no, the wrestling is great, but <laughs> best with a, within a heartbeat, wrangling the beast, he rides it into the fray. It uh, it gores a foe, blowing him away. Bad, the battle being done, coming to an end, the champion, the beast. Now call each other friend. Hey, Aww, very nice that's does. adorable. Uh, I feel like if anything deserves inspiration, that does. So why don't you mark some inspiration for okay. coming up with a poem while you are taking watch? Um, what else do you other than other than 
becoming inspired with your with your poetry uh do you what else do you do during your watch it, for the most part it is uh just quiet and lonely with this constant sound of, of weeping um for the first few hours with the with the weeping going on i'm definitely not playing my harp i'm just like standing there like pacing backwards and forwards you know keeping an eye out because i don't have dark vision so it's just like i don't see anything and then i like i'll dart to a new location and i'm like yeah no i don't see anything and then, like, my, mood, like, my mood will switch from being scared to like yeah come fight me i'll wake up my big buddy and we'll fuck you up and then like it'll switch again she's like oh i don't know <laughs> and then, like you'll see like something fly by the fire and she's like what's that it's okay. One of the, <laughs> the logs like pops when it's burning, and Emily's like, ah! <laughs> Pretty much. Like, oh my yeah, God. hiding behind the other log, like, oh, it was nothing. It's fine. All right. Yeah, How does Emily live with me and Emily? And she's like, <laughs> exactly. The, the thing is, it's just, just like being like an over hyperactive pixie. So it's just like, and then next thing you know it, she's just like, from all that activity, she's just sitting there, like calm as, calm as water, right? Just eating. Right, just staring at the fire for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they gotta get back that energy that she's just burned, darting around and shit. And next, you know, she's back at it again. I'm imagining Emily is like somebody that's really hopped up on sugar. She's just like a, a kid. Yeah. Like All you, the you time. just have a burst of energy, and then you go back and you eat a sugar cube, and you have a burst of energy again. Yeah. <laughs> Emily's like that, but without the sugar cubes as a necessary component. <laughs> All right, so you spend an anxious night. After a few hours, the weeping seems to cease and uh, no longer troubles you uh, as you flit about. The morning comes as everyone awakes and is, you know, uh, well-rested. Uh, you, you've regained your, your hit points and spell slots and all that good stuff. You heading back out for the night? Uh, before we head out, can I uh, cast... Uh, detect magic as a ritual on the runes yeah 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 you want to climb up and like get near them yeah okay so they're a little bit farther south of where you ended up um uh, here in the in the morning light they're almost un like detectable uh it takes you a few minutes to hike down and and try to find them um when you do, they're, they're very, very, very faint and only partially there. Uh, but you begin uh, casting a ritual. What is it like when you when you cast your ritual? Like, how do you go about detecting this magic? Um, detect magic. Look at the spell real quick. No, just what do you? What is the ritual oh. that you do? Right? Like, how do you go about to, like bringing forth this magic power? Because you spend ten um, minutes in ritual, just asking what it is. Yeah, I. I guess uh, it's verbal and semantic, so I'm just uh, sitting there, waving my hands around uh, for 10 minutes, uh, All right. deep in uh, France, I guess, uh, Okay. trying to... Yeah, so you go into a deep trance, right? You 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 kind of sit cross-legged across from this uh, this piece of the cliff. You you begin waving your hands in a s hypnotic pattern, slowly picking up speed uh, as as you you fall in deeper into this trance. And you begin humming forth uh, the the incantations of of magic. Um, as ten minutes approaches, your your gyrations kind of stop and slow. And as you utter your last word, you open your eyes. Uh, and you can see the the, brin the, the blinding uh, amount of magic on this cliffside. The runes that you saw last night stand out in bright relief of, of just pure uh, of pure magic. Um, <clears throat> they uh, are a um, abjuration school. You can tell immediately by your your specialization. Uh, and they just they burn your retina almost. They're just so bright. Like you blink your eyes, you still see the the after image of the of the spell. All right. Um. Yeah. I guess I just kind of keep that to myself, and uh, once I'm done with my ritual, I say I'm ready to go. Okay. Yeah. You you sense the abjuration magic of these runes. Um, y'all, anything else to do before you head out, or are you just heading out? Uh, Tom is ready whenever. All right. 
Sounds like we're heading out. So you get the cart hitched up together and begin pulling your way back out along the, the, the road, leaving the Cliffs of Refuge behind. Um, I'm next to the last person to wake up. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And as he as he picks his as he picks his stuff up and we and we walk off, like you can see that like while he was while he was falling asleep, he was kind of doodling in the dust of the cave. There's like this like really simple little maze that he's like just drawn in the dust and then <laughs> failed to solve after drawing it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I love that. Gormak is smarter than himself. Yeah, like like <laughs> Gormak Gormak like 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 drew this maze and then he started trying to solve it and then like like that sort of mental energy is what finally like lulled him to sleep. That's like his he's like wind down. All right. So you guys uh get your cart ready to go, uh and begin heading back down the road the the crisp fall morning uh is is very bright uh and as as you leave here the gurgling of the stream kind of comes and goes uh as you roll through the hills the day it gradually warms uh at one point you you pass a few people going along the old road um uh, back to from the hawk's hollow towards sarmanath um all of them seem to be traders and merchants they have the the long kind of shawls um and the goods strapped to donkeys and things behind them uh they travel in packs of four or five uh and you know they hail you uh, they see that you're seekers and and you know give you the the respect but none of them seem all that interested in engaging if you let them mm -hmm. be uh, and as you move on past the old road, uh, you, you pass towns throughout the day. Um, they, every five or six miles or so, you'll find a small village or a town packed together. Uh, all the kids are, are like rush out to see the seekers as you pass by. They, they smile and, and clap, especially if Emily recites any bardic tales. Um, but none, no one uh, bats too much of an eye at seekers on these these old country roads. Um, you pass a few uh, bits and smatterings of wood as the hills begin to die down, um, and as the as the day begins to um, hit like full uh, afternoon, uh, you begin to crest up over Willard's Mill. Um, and what you see is just kind of an idyllic little town before you. Uh, the town straddles kind of like a small river, bigger than the stream that you camped next to the <coughs> night before. Uh, <coughs> and it's uh, next to this river and at the edge of kind of like a thick and, and shady patch of, of woods. Uh, the, the, the trees have kind of been dotting the hillside, have kind of come together here to, to make some, some woodlands. Uh, opposite uh, of the woods, the large mill that is the namesake of the city uh, rises up next to the stream. It's a, a water mill is just churning lazily in the in the river. Um, but most notably, probably from that, is on the far far edge of town. There's a, a grave like uh, site, a graveyard uh, with with standing stones. You can see as you begin riding down into town. Um, as everyone rides down into town, I want all of you to make an arcane wisdom check. Uh, and, yeah, arcana, arcana uh, an arcana wisdom check. Excuse me. Okay. Arcana wisdom. Uh, I'm just gonna roll the standard thing because my bonuses are exactly the same. Okay, if your bonus is the same, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's why I was just letting you know because it's gonna say int. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, rose. We are waiting on. Okay. Ooh. So, Rose and Tom, uh, as you begin approaching Willard's Mill, as you're, as you're riding forward with the oxen in front of you, uh, you feel the air around you with this, like, it, it, an intense pressure momentarily. It's, it's almost as, as if everything around you just squeezed in really, really tight. Uh, and there's this, this, this feeling of just being under pressure. And as, as the moment you feel it, it immediately passes. Um, um, with that feeling, I'm going to stop and I want to take a few steps back 
And then I want to take a few steps forward again and see if that's a repeatable thing. Like if there's a barrier of some kind that we just cross through. Uh, you stop, you kind of step back, you step forward, and you don't feel the same sensation again. Hmm. Did anyone else feel that just now? I, I stare at you. Uh, do we all feel it, or was it just them two? Just those two who passed the check. <laughs> I, 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 like, as we're, like, walking, I, like, turn on Gorak's shoulder, and I'm like, are you feeling okay? <laughs> Gor Gor Gormak, yeah, I think, like, I, think I, I look over to see Rose also clearly, like, disconcerted. Like, yeah. Rose, she has her, like, she has her hands out, right? And she's, like, she's, like, feeling, feeling the air around her, and she's, like, there's, some, there's something... Something is weird here, and she like yeah. sticks Gor a finger Gormac out. Rose doing like like this, and Gormak goes, "It wasn't me." <laughs> <laughs> Not that Gormak. Be on your guard. Something <laughs> in this place. Uh, do we see people like out and about? Like there are people. Yeah, you're you're kind village. of like up above the city, the 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 small town. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there's these kind of gentle hills, and the, as the, you descend the last one, it's kind of in this uh, valley area. So you can see down into the town, uh, and yeah, the town square is is bustling. There's people out and about. There's fields past the graveyard uh, that are being sown and worked. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the town seems to be alive and well. There's something strange about this place. It, stay on your guard as long as we're here. I pull my great axe out. Not, not that on guard. <laughs> I, I slowly put my great axe away. You're just looking at him like. <sighs> All right. Uh, you you descend down uh, into the village. Um, <clears throat> they. Uh, the first thing you pass through are just, you know, some uh, workers in, in the fields. The the fields just outside of the uh, uh, town towards the, the hillside are, are planted with some kind of wheat uh, or grain that's been grown up nice and high and tall. Uh, it, it, it comes up above the, the head of the oxen as, as they are driven through. There's a there's a path. Uh, and there are, there are men in the, in the field uh, sowing and harvesting. Uh, as you pass, one of them kind of looks over to you and says, Ah, good timing. Uh, <laughs> you missed the noon wraith. Uh, midday, you know. You don't want to be out here at that time. Uh, he just noon wraith. Ah, yes, yes. They don't come every day, but you make a good habit of not being out at noon. And he just kind of <laughs> keeps working as he talks. Uh, okay, yes, I agree. This place is odd. Uh, are there any... <laughs> Sorry, we're we're just arriving in town. Are there any lodgings in this area? We expect to be to be staying for a short while. Oh yeah, we've got a uh, uh, man, uh, Betsy. Yes, uh, she had, doesn't get very many customers. I think there's a merchant that just came into town yesterday. Uh, you might be able to lodge with him. There's a uh, four or five uh, rooms above the above the tavern. Excellent, thank you. And this this merchant who came in yesterday by the name of uh, Horse Dog, I believe. Oh, you know him? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he's he should be setting up in the town square. Uh, he's Bit of a of an eater, I think. <laughs> he uh, takes a long lunch. Greg, when did they say that uh, horse dog had gone had gone missing? Uh, a, over a month ago. Yeah. Yes. Oh God, are you wheel of timing me right now? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he takes a long lunch. Yes, he does. <laughs> I, I, I have a I have a guess as to what's Fucking going on. Hell. I really hope you're not doing what I think you're doing. Gormac. Anyways, Gormac. thank you. We'll uh, we'll go meet him. Yes, Gormax. Like, well, well, I guess we found him then, didn't we? But how is that possible? If he came in yesterday, <sighs> he came in with his cart, just like you did. See, you could go talk to him. I, yes, he, we'll, we'll we'll do exactly that. Thank you for the information. Uh, which which way to Betsy's? And I we get directions. Can't and move on. miss it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, as we're going, I say, remember they said rift magics in this area. Things get strange when it's involved. Oh, you mean like time is slow for these people? Slow or looping or something? I don't know. Am I really old compared to the people? Or maybe here? he doesn't remember anything that happened after a certain time. It just all feels like uh, maybe Gormac's I'm like, not sure Gormac's like why don't we just go talk to him and then we'll be good 
Suddenly I got an accent. Oh, if he's trapped in this place, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was gonna say. Accent is so good that you should keep that. Just... So I understand, Gormak. It's, I imagine it's a bit harder to speak in, in the common tongue with, uh, yeah. you probably have a slightly non-human shaped uh, mouth, I assume. <laughs> you can like see that I have a bull's head, like <laughs> obvious I have a non-human shaped mouth. <laughs> Uh, All righty. Yeah, I, you come back into town. Betsy's is, he, as he says, you can't miss it. It's right in the, the town square. Uh, mm -hmm. And as you arrive uh, in town, uh, one thing that stands out immediately is amongst the hustle and bustle, and, and before you can even really step foot, you see this uh, dirty, uh, be, like, deranged-looking man. He's got mud and dirt on his head, and but he's dressed in in like crazy crazy clothes uh, <coughs> he's got trinkets and feathers and things and tucked into his 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 gross hair and and is plastered all over his his clothes of, of many different colors around his neck he wears every symbol of of religious or or, or arcane or or enchantment order that you can think of just in in a, in a block and he's hollering to any and all that will that will give him the time of day you know raving it's like the blind beast is here oh, it must be banished it is the end times the end is upon us the I end think, is think... here the cycle Tom will... must be broken Tom, Tom will walk up and say that's that's quite a lot of directions to split your faith in when like kind of like indicating toward all the, the just, amulets he, and symbols he, he's wearing as you as you indicate he like grabs you like by the the, the collar <laughs> he's like you can see it catch you the blind beast is upon us we must Hold, end the cycle. slow down slow down blood beast the blind beast blind beast <laughs> what what is the blind beast it is While here it stalks to... us it is the end of days uh, that sounds bad indeed. What is the blind beast? The you beast, see, it kills. You see Emily with her fingers in her ears. It's like, he's annoying me, and I'm a charm person on him. Oh, how interesting. Um, he doesn't resist. Uh, he, he, in fact, immediately, immediately, it feels akin to you. And he says, she knows! She knows! The pixie knows! <laughs> Look at her! She's seen the beast! Turn she down knows the cycle will be broken! Hold on. Down a what, what's this cycle that you're talking the about? The endless cycle! God damn Every it. Every day the I cycle taken goes sleep. on. We must break free of it! What, what happens in the cycle? Life! <laughs> and hunting! The blind beast is hunting us! Just shh. It's okay, buddy. After I'm right here. Calm down. Stop yelling, please. I have the leaves. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I need. I need a second. <laughs> <laughs> Which <Why? laughs> When, when Grim finally snaps, <laughs> this is what he's going to become. He's <laughs> in a necklace, and he's just going to be screaming out, "Life!" <laughs> the cycle of life. Oh my god. Oh, hold on. Uh, I'm gonna say, how long has the blind beast been here? As long as the man has been here, the blind beast stalks us. He will take us all. The end of times are here and upon us. You! And he grabs the minotaur. You <laughs> look like the beast. Are you working with him? We must banish him. He looks like the beast. Of course. <laughs> he has horns. Ormac <laughs> like looks at him. Doesn't say what, anything. What, uh, <laughs> one, one more question. We'll, we'll see if we can do anything about your blind beast. When did you become aware of it? I, I have the book. The book that tells all. <laughs> I see. I know. These sheep Where, are blind. You book? will not be blind like them. You will listen to me. What, Banish what the book? beast. You have a book? Yes. Can I see the book? No. Can I see the book, please, friend? Okay, you have to come to my house. Uh, Greg, you muted yourself. You muted. Somehow. <laughs> you got so loud, you muted. Oh, yeah, right. Zoom no. muted. <laughs> Zoom, Zoom, Zoom was like, ah, that's, that's enough. 
That's enough yelling. <laughs> Somebody at Zoom headquarters was listening in on this call and they just said, take him down. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He says, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Startled <laughs> his flame now. I will show you. But you must come with me to my house. Keep it there. Greg, you got real quiet. Can can you handle this one, Emily? He seems a little bit more, uh, more like, uh, seems to have taken more of a liking toward you than to me. I, I'll tell you about it later, but yeah, I can I see the book? Yes, yes, you can see the book. Sure. While you while you get the book done, I'll go uh, talk to our missing merchant. Okay. Am I still quiet? No, you're oh, fine. You're good now. You're good. Okay. Zoom, Zoom put the automatic adjust volume on, I guess. I decided I was too <laughs> like, fuck this guy. This guy is maxing out on all levels. So he's yeah. like, come, come, come with me. Come. He like grabs you like in a big hug and like holds you under his arm. He's like, yes, we will come to my house. And he begins walking off with is you. Is this guy not the merchant? I thought this was the merchant guy. No! No. <laughs> oh, we just found something random. Say okay. Save me. We just got some arms and then like, save me. <laughs> and he just begins but, walking off with with Emily I, under his arm. I stay, I stay with Emily, and if she says save me, I'm just going to kind of pull her out, stick her on my shoulder, <laughs> and keep walking. You do that. He's like, oh, oh, she's gone. She's a witch. Oh, she's there. Okay, it's fine. Follow, follow. Jump. <laughs> I will go. I will go with Tom. And as I guess, as we leave this place, I'm just gonna say, um, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, sure. Go right ahead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How can it be the end of day if it's just past noon? <laughs> it's um. <laughs> oh, our figures of speech are not a. Uh... I guess they don't translate too well. It's it's a way of saying humans think of, of time relative to themselves, right? So if humanity was to be destroyed, we would call that the end of days. Now, yes. And wouldn't the days no, the days would continue. I, I know exactly okay. what you mean. But, but from our perspective, it would be the end of days because we would not see another one. Kind of selfish, isn't it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, I make another little note into my very, book. <laughs> selfishness is a very human perspective. So, Tom, you are. Where are you going? I'm sorry, I was caught up. Uh, I want to go talk to our missing merchant. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so who's who's going with Tom? Rose and Tom are going to see Horse Dog. Uh, I'll go with them to horse, see Horse Dog. Okay. So Gormak and uh, Emily will be taken to uh, our crazy friend's house. That's good. <clears throat> horse dog, and I'm like, <laughs> that's adding good. More creatures. Now it's a seahorse dog. <laughs> uh, that's not what he meant. So you uh, will follow you to uh, horse dog first, because that that will be probably the quickest. So Janlar, Tom, and uh, Rose, you guys easily find horse dog. There's this yep. there's this large wagon. Um, just with a huge, like, emblazoned name painted on the canvas side of it, and it says, Horse Dog Mercer's Emporium! Um, in that accent, in writing, it's very, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> you, you read it, and it doesn't, it doesn't actually make noise, but you know that's the accent yeah. supposed to be right. It's like when you read something in all caps, and you know that that person is shouting. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he is, he's just setting up, he's, he's got, uh, he's pulling out, like, drawers and cubby holes from this wagon, um, and he's, he's arranging various items, there's sacks of grain stacked up on there, there's, um, there's silk, like, bolts of silk, and there's even, like, more mundane things, like horseshoes and iron, and, uh, amongst that, there's also a little small setup of, like, uh, g like, gold and jewelry, um, and, uh, even more things hidden in the back of the of the wagon horse dog himself <clears throat> uh is a like short squat man um with a big bulbous belly uh he seems to be maybe a halfling maybe a hobbit uh maybe an elf he's got some strange non-human features to his face um, but it, it's impossible to place, it seems like. Every time you think you get a beat on it, it seems like it's something else. Um, and, uh, he's just humming and whistling a little jitty, little ditty to himself as he's, as he's setting up the, the wagon. 
All right, so uh, Tom will walk up and say, Horse Dog Mercer, and kind of flash the, the Seeker badge, like a police badge. <laughs> 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 ah, yes, Horse Dog at your service. Oh, a Seeker. Ah, yes. and you I, see uh, a glint in his eye. He, like, rubs his hands together. What can Horse Dog Mercer do for you? Well, I have a few questions to ask you, actually. It's a uh, Seeker business. Unfortunately, I'm not a, not a customer today. Oh, oh, un unfortunate. I don't have many weapons and magical items, but... Uh, for a seeker, I could part with what little I do have. No, no, no. I don't. I don't need any any items from you. I, I simply have a few questions. Oh, questions of a mercer. Well, yes. Horse dog mercer at your service. So, uh, when did you arrive in town? Just last night. Well, that's not true. I arrived in the afternoon, but I didn't. I had to have a little snack, so mm. I didn't uh, really get going until last night. Should be on my way next day, so I can keep my. <clears throat> so I can keep my schedule. You see, there's lots of towns right. that Horstog Mercer must meet. When did you leave Sarmanath? Oh, let's see. Probably a week. A week past? I see. Uh, anything interesting happen on your travel? Well, there was this young lady that really needed a diamond ring. See, she had lost the one her betrothed gave her. But... Mm -hmm. It just so happened that I had the exact one she needed. And he, like, winks at you. He's like, come, look at this. And he, like, pulls open one of the, the drawers. And there's this little, like, spinning wheel. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's, like, a sack of coal next to it. And he's like, with this, I can make any ring I need. Ha ha ha! I stole Impressive. it from gnome. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> it's your secret safe with me. Yes. Uh, when you came into town... Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? I mean, I assume you've been to this town many times before, correct? I'd say I have. No. No. Oh, it's your first time here. No, no, I've been here many times. Can't say yes. I noticed anything. Can't say I have noticed anything out of the ordinary. I apologize hmm. that I was unclear, Seeker. Oh, no, it's it's fine. Hmm. I see. No, no strange mag magical incidents on your journey? Mm, I mean, no stranger than normal. Out here, uh, <laughs> it's exactly as I meant. Yes. Hmm. Well, uh, thank you for your time. If you would be fine with sticking around in town for a few extra days, I might have some, some follow-up questions for you uh, later. Well, I, I do have a fairly strict schedule. If I'm not back in Sarmanath in about a month, the Mercers will be asking questions. Sure, maybe maybe uh, we could travel with you then, if that wouldn't if that wouldn't be too cumbersome. Well, having a seeker entourage would do wonders for business. Mm, I agree to that, absolutely. A little protection Excellent. for anyone. I'll, uh, I'll be in contact with you then. I should probably arrange for some rooms for us while we're here. Excellent. All right, and uh, Tom will stand up and say, do you have, do you have anything that you wanted to, uh, to ask here, Rose? Or are you, uh, are you satisfied? I look at Tom, I look at the Mercer, <laughs> and I'm gonna flash my Seeker badge. And I'm gonna smile. <laughs> 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 he, he nods and says, oh. <laughs> And then I put it away and I'll nod. A spring and seeker. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> what about you? Good sir, are you a seeker too? Or are you looking to buy something? Oh shit, are you a commoner? Don't tell anyone about the gnome thing. That was seeker business. <laughs> this is Janlar, he is also a seeker. Oh. Seeker business. Yeah, my badge. <laughs> <laughs> I also show my badge. Um... Uh... It was fall right now, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's fall. Are there any uh, in the last month? Have there any been any like big holidays or uh, major? I think, events didn't we just go past there? a holiday? I could have sworn uh, that was in the exposition text that you were reading us at the very beginning. Yes. So you you the feast day um, is normally a, a, a secret tradition once a year. <laughs> the, the new seekers like arrive right? oh so it's treated like uh, a holiday it's treated like a holiday though because the guild in sarmanath is so big and so influential that it's essentially mm -hmm. the it's not what rules sarmanath the five dragons rule sarmanath but one of the five dragons uh runs the seekers guild brand um uh, oh he's a dragon 
he is. You didn't really talk to him much, and he doesn't talk much. But you would <laughs> you would know that Brand is one of the dragons. Um, you would know all the dragons. But uh, is this like the metaphorical concept of dragon, or do they just shape shift? The, the five the five dragons are an honorary title that have been given okay. to the leaders of these of these guilds for a long time. Um, okay, the wizard's name is Janlar, right? Yes, and there is a there is a Janlar. The current Janlar happens to be a woman, um, which is both entertaining and funny. Uh, but they're named after an old band of heroes from the town. Uh, and they, they run the five main guilds. <clears throat> okay, yeah, so I would ask him then uh, what he's planning on doing for the feast. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world! Ah, uh, new seekers, always a, always a wonderful time. I, I appreciate the guild giving us the, the feast. Oh, let's see. I'll probably find me a date or three and bounce them on my knee and get them drunk with ale. <laughs> well, we'll uh, we'll be there as well. We're kind of on oath-bound to, to show up for that. Excellent, excellent. Oath-bound are the Seekers. Oh, you well, not exactly oath-bound, but it's, you know, mm. yeah, I common courtesy to, to, meet, to meet your new brothers. Mm. Makes sense, makes sense, yes. Well, can I interest Anyways. you in anything? Uh, unfortunately, not at the moment. We uh, we we spent quite a bit setting out for this journey. All right. Well, but uh, we'll we'll be in contact, and we'll we'll likely be traveling the road with you soon. All right. Uh, please be in touch. Uh, so you three have have done your business. Let's <laughs> hold. Let's uh, flip on over to Milman and not. I'm sorry. To Emily and Gormak, as you are following <laughs> this deranged individual. Uh, back to, to his house. Uh, and he's oh, please don't be a messy. Please don't be a messy. I'm going to be laughing even harder if we get there and the house is immaculate. Like, perfectly clean. <laughs> Everything is spartan. Like, OCD clean. Like Yeah, yeah. like, it's perfect. It's yeah. like, oh. and then Except, like, there's one wall cool. that has, like, a, a complex map of, like, strings yeah. and connections. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Like, he opens his closet and it's just, like, a really well-organized string board. Uh, so th this guy, he he mutters and raves the whole time. Uh, you kind of are tuning him out, I think, as he as he gets you back to the uh, uh, back edge of town, close to the graveyard. Um, and as he approaches the graveyard, he kind of cocks his head and looks at it, and goes the beast. And then he opens his door and uh, <laughs> leads you inside. Um, the... Gormak's gonna like look at the graveyard and see like, are there any like statues or anything else out there like that uh, resemble across, beasts? When you look across the graveyard, uh, you see headstones um, just kind of arranged very very neatly in rows um, and a quick head count. How smart is Cormac? Nine intelligence. You're smart enough Not to very. count. Uh, okay, a quick, yeah. A quick head count uh, gives you just if the rows matched, a hundred gravestones. Okay. Um, and you know, just cursory. Uh, they all seem to be just b plainly adorned with, like, a single name uh, just written into them. Um, please make an Arcana Wisdom check as you stare out into the graveyard. Okay. Uh, 20, 20 plus 1. Right? Arcana? Yeah, I don't have Arcana. So. 18? Mm, as, you, as you look out... You don't see a beast or feel a beast, but you immediately upon seeing one of the rows, you get just this feeling that there's something wrong with the row of graves and this feeling of dread. Maybe it's not even a feeling you've known often. Just it fills the pit of your of your stomach. Uh, and, and, and you just you you're, you're, you just go ice cold for a moment as you look across the across the graveyard. Okay. Um, is it like a, I'm afraid to get closer, or a, like would I would I be able to like go investigate that? You could go investigate it. Um, it, it, you would not be you just you you know that there's like despair there like it fills you with like a, a a dread and a fear and a despair like it's an emotion that washes over you but you could yeah you you are capable of acting it's not perfect. okay I, i'll uh, i'll kind of stop well you know as, as as emily and i are like walking along i'll kind of stop as i as i look and i'll go 
Emily. Something's wrong with the graves. I can't do anything. He's got me. No, I'm carrying you. Remember, I pulled you out from under his arm. Oh, did you? Yeah. All right. Well, you said case. you said help me, and and Gormak helped you. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> well. So yeah, you're I like right over there. my shoulder, and we're following him, and he he does his little the beast thing, and I stop and oh, look at the graves, and then so good. I stop. All right. And I well, tell you something's wrong. I I look over at the at the graves. Do I notice I'll anything? Point at the row that feels wrong. Uh, Do you want me to roll over? Yes, please. Uh, as you look across the graves, please roll uh, the same Arcana Wisdom check. No, I don't see anything. No, uh, you look and you you think no, it just looks like a graveyard. I'm not Gormack seeing will... anything, big buddy. Gormack will shrug and go, "Okay, you know magic," and I'll just go inside and follow the guy. As you guys like, have been sitting here looking at the graveyard, the guy has been ranting at you. You just have been tuning him out because it's yeah. unnatural. But he's yeah. like, "Come in, come in!" We just, it's just like, like in every other game or whatever. When you start talking to someone, it focuses in. When we talk to each other, we just focus in on each other and everything else. <laughs> yeah. And like dumbed out, we're like, yeah, I, I don't see anything, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I like to imagine it's like the scripted segment of a of a video game where like the NPC is yelling at you to come to them, and they will <laughs> yell for hours on end until you yeah. finally walk up to them. You're just pressing A, just get past it all. Yeah. Alrighty. So you enter this this little kind of hovel. Um, near the graveyard, and the the place is Spartan. I wouldn't say clean and orderly like you were saying, but just devoid of many things. Uh, if you had happened upon it by chance, you would almost consider it to have been abandoned. Um, but clearly there is some signs of him living here. There, there is um, a hearth that has been used at least somewhat recently, as there's ash in it, um, and there are you know, a, a a single set of like bed sheets and bed accoutrement in the corner although lacking the actual bed itself it seems this this man just sleeps on the floor swaddled um and as you uh enter he kind of stops you and for the first time in a while he's quiet he goes i keep it safe and he like reaches down to the floorboards and just pulls them up um and inside there's a little box um, it seems to be a perfect cube of stone. And he goes, see, it is safe. And he draws a finger across his hand. And you notice that his jagged fingernails are actually able to cut into his skin. He, like, squeezes out some blood. And as that happens, the box kind of warbles and it slides open. And inside he pulls out this, like, wrapped up book. He slowly unwraps it. And he goes, see, I have the book. A book. Can I read it? Mm. Okay. He opens it <laughs> and shows it to you. He's like, he's like, yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. And I'm like, just gonna like browse through it. Uh, it is written in a, a runic script, um, much like the uh, paintings on the on the cliffs were. Um, however, this one is not Sylvan. If you speak Sylvan. Uh, this is a, a bunch of runes. What languages do you speak? And read Sylvan, and write? Um, Sylvan, Elvish, and Common. I okay. speak Common and Minotaur, but I think the likelihood that it's written in Minotaur <laughs> is probably pretty low. That would be hilarious yeah, no. if it was. So y you see, uh, <clears throat> uh -oh. you see just like runic script. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, you uh -oh. froze. <laughs> Everyone in Zoom just froze. You have a beautiful face, Mike. All right. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Um, so the uh, the the runes are are littered throughout here, and and included amongst them are diagrams of various things. Um, and the 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 runes are slanted and and uh, jagged and curled and hooked. Um, they they don't quite seem. Uh, they don't seem akin to yours, right? Uh, runic speech in this, in the Midlands especially, tends to be Sylvan, um, but this is most clearly a, a foreign to to your to your tongue. Can I like scribble down some of the runic writing so that I can show my party members later? Make a sleight of hand intelligence check, please, to copy this perfectly. Okay, so four, we'll see how well four. you can copy this. Uh, yes, it was plus four. Uh, 
There we go. Uh, perfect. Yes, you make a, a near-perfect copy of this. Uh, and after he sees what you've done, he slams it shut uh, and goes, Okay, you've seen you, Fred. The beast is coming. Get it first! The moment he slams the book, I'm like, whoa. He says, <laughs> he says I have the book. I need okay. the eyes of the blind beast. Give me the eyes and I'll banish it! <laughs> this guy is so fucking weird. I'm like, okay, we've came, we saw, we can leave now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm not I'll sure add. if this is the worst or the best, like, sidetracking quest. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll, I'll ask this guy, I'm like, <clears throat> blind, does it have eyes? Yes. They do not see. Okay. <laughs> Give them to me. Give me the eyes of the beast. The psycho will be broken. And he waves Where the book at you. Find the beast. What did you say? I was shaking my. Where do we? You. Where do we find the beast? It's everywhere. It will find you. It will. I'll, I'll find like. You. I'll like start reaching like like for his eyes like he takes the book and smacks your hand not my <laughs> eyes I need them to read the ritual <laughs> We can go now I don't want to Okay I I just at, at that I just turn around and leave no <laughs> no goodbye like Emily's like we can go pivot walk out <laughs> All right and I so, just like turn on his shoulder. I'm like, bye. We've arrived in Willard's Mill. You've 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 kind of made some new friends here. Uh, it's 4:10. We've got to start a little late. I know that yeah, Faye, it's late for bad. you though. Um, do you want to try to finish up uh, a day in Willard's Mill, or do we need to call it for you? It might. Oh, we might want to just call it. To be honest. Yeah. All right. Then this is where session one will come to an end. We're uh, not adopting this one as an NPC who follows the party, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. He'd be the best. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need this retainer. Please. No. <laughs> uh, next week. Hey, can you put we another will... log on the fire? It burns! <laughs> <laughs> it just wakes you up in the middle of the night when you really need your goddamn sleep. It's coming. <laughs> We you just probably up wake up to him like like staring over you like <laughs> I just wanted to see if you're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, excellent. Well, um we're gonna pick this up next week, uh same time, same place. Uh we will try to start at twelve. Uh, I, I promise I will get up even <laughs> earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't. Think, I, think, I, can't. I think you need to. You need to try to go to bed earlier. That's the. That's the real one. Yeah, <laughs> the, the lucky thing is, it was a once-off training game for the other guys. So I was like, I even said to everybody, I was like, I'm not available Saturday. I need to sleep. <laughs> go games all day tomorrow. And I still fucked that up. That's okay. <laughs> you're you're a warrior for getting up as early as you do to play with us. Yeah. So we 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 just I, in good fun. It's worth it. It's so worth it. <laughs> Especially excellent. for the eyes. The eyes. <laughs> um, excellent. Anything you guys want to say or shout out before we sign off officially? If you haven't already, follow Greg for the eyes. And <laughs> yeah. Life. Yeah. Do that. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Uh. Um. Not a lot going on for me. The I'll uh, by <laughs> let's see, couple weeks oh. I should be able to link that that uh, podcast that I'm starting, but that episode won't be out yet. So cool. not much to link to until then. So I will look forward to that. That sounds like it'll be fun. All right, I'm doing my regular Sunday. I'll be doing a game literally in the next twenty minutes. Next D and D game. <laughs> <laughs> and then I do another four hours. I have an hour break, and then normally I would be doing another four hours. Well, there you go. If you need more of Millman <laughs> and more D and D, go check that out. That it's is like awesome. another eight-ish hours of that. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm like Sundays now is just D and D day. Like Sweet. everybody's like, "Oh, you're gonna be streaming tomorrow," and I'm like, "Sorry, fam, I'm on one show. Yeah. I'll be streaming one show, and it's then Sunday and D really is what it is." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so that is thank all. Thank you for having me. Yo, Sorry, thank I'm you late. for playing. 
That's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, We will see you all next week. Have a wonderful week until then. Uh, And bye. 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 (laughs) Very professional.